Um, and here we go. We're going to share the screen to today's meetup, and we're going to be looking at Lambda and Beyond uh, with Alan Murray in just a couple of minutes. But before we do that, I am your host, Ken, and I'm going to run through and give you the standard uh, welcome to and thank you to the sponsors that we usually do here. So um, the Vancouver Power BI user group is sponsored by Skillwave. If you are looking for fantastic training on how to use Power Query, Power Pivot, Power BI, uh, you definitely want to check us out at skillwave.training. Excel Guru is the parent company of Skillwave and also the parent company that actually delivers Monkey Tools, which is my uh, pro add-in for working with Excel, building Power Query and data models and other things, uh, which you may have seen if you actually uh, were at the London uh, meetup yesterday because I did a presentation there for Alan Murray's group, which was a heck of a lot of fun. I believe that recording is actually out and available uh, online as well if you wanted to check that out. Our next meetups that are going to be coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, we've got Reed Havens is going to be joining us at our regular time slot of 5 p.m. Pacific, and he's going to be uh, leading a presentation on uh, his ugly baby story, so I'm sure that is going to be highly entertaining. Um, and then I'm super excited to be welcoming uh, Carlos Barboza to our platform as well in September. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't know Carlos, he's been a longtime um, attendee of the Vancouver Power BI user group. He's also recently uh, been awarded his uh, Excel MVP status, and we're uh, pleased to be welcoming him to talk about uh, tips and tricks for interactive charts and dynamic arrays. That should be uh, pretty cool. Very much looking forward to both of these. Um, to give you a quick heads up here, we've got some new features that have been released in Monkey Tools. I published a new build uh, just a couple of days ago. We've released some updates to Smart Folder Query and the Smart Folder Monkey. We now not only allow you to have dynamic connections between uh, SharePoint and local folders, but we also have an option in there, which is super easy to configure, to switch the connector between SharePoint or local.files and .contents. And this actually can make your queries a lot faster to run if you're trying to work through uh, folders that have huge amounts of subfile or files in them, um, and you want to actually strip that down, the, the contents version is usually faster. So some cool, uh, cool little ads there. Uh, we've also added some documentation to FN Get Parameter and FN Smart Folder. Uh, there's more documentation going to be coming in the future, but I will save that for a future update. Uh, I just want to throw out there that my Excel Fundamentals Bootcamp, if you are looking or you or somebody in your uh, organization needs some training or upskilling as far as working with, uh, you know, core Excel formulas and pivot tables, data visualization, Power Query, um, we have a fantastic program here in uh, our Excel Fundamentals Bootcamp. Our next semester is starting on September 13th, so it's not too late to register. And this is an ideal program for upskilling the people in your organization to get them ready for advanced business intelligence analysis. Speaking of advanced analysis, if you're interested in actually coming and hanging out with myself and John Peltier for three to four days of fantastic content, we are actually going to be running some live in uh, boot camps. These are going to be held in Portland, Oregon and Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, the links, I believe the slide deck has already been posted to the meetup site, so you can grab those there, uh, but you should definitely check those out. They're coming up pretty soon. The last thing, uh, or well, pretty close to the last thing I'm going to say here is that um, the recording of this uh, session here, like all sessions, uh, is produced and uploaded within uh, 48 hours for the most part, and uh, we host those on the Skillwave YouTube channel. Uh, once those videos have been published, we always make sure that we actually notify everybody via the Meetup site so you'll know when they're live so that you can always come back and watch some of the amazing things that uh, I know that Alan is going to be showing us uh, today. Uh, we have a couple of monkey shorts that we're featuring as well. If you like bite-sized content, three minutes or less, this is a great place to go and learn about how to convert your pivot tables to cube formulas, break those arrays apart, and uh, and whatnot. So some really cool little tips there that you should definitely uh, check out if you want to get some cool little learnings along the way. And the last thing, this is my final slide, I guarantee is if you would like to speak at Vanpug, we would love to have you. We are always looking for new speakers. Just fill out this little survey down here. It's very, very short. We'll get in touch with you and we'll get you on our stage. Our audience is fantastic. We love seeing new content and would love to have you here if you want to try your hand at it. And on that note, that's my bit. I'm done. Alan, it's your turn. Are you ready, my friend? Uh, ready and do I need to? Yeah, seconds. there you go. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Went too fast. You weren't expecting that. <laughs> so, uh, boot camp with uh, Ken and John sounds pretty cool. It does. You want to come? <laughs> I was un unaware of that. <laughs> Love the in-person stuff. And I'll actually be in Warwick, Rhode Island when you guys are in Boston. Oh, uh, well, that's that's uh, that's not the right place. Close. 
<laughs> I know it's close. There you go. <laughs> I would like to go there, but I can't. Uh, just to um, Caroline, uh, the comment in the chat on the uh, the document with the links I just presented uh, will be, if it's not already, uploaded to the Meetup site, so you'll be able to download it from there. Um, and I'll just check that while Alan's doing his presentation to make sure that uh, that it is there. All right. Um, and how are you making out there, Alan? Oh, I see a screen. Just trying to interact with uh, chat where we're going. Um, I didn't ask you at the start, Ken. How strict are we on? finish times do you want to give me a shout if it is close we're super strict the uh, the rule here we always stick to this is you go as long as you need <laughs> all right all right <laughs> hope you guys so, are in for the <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll pull the hook on you after about three hours if you get that long but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but no I, I mean you know usually an hour ish but you know what if you got to go uh, longer than that um you know people can always grab the recording if they have to jump off and and whatnot so um you know guide it to uh to to what you feel is appropriate Alan. Sure. Yeah, it won't be anything crazy. Just saying. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, welcome, everybody. So my name's Adam. I'm here for a Vancouver meetup. So just quickly for those who maybe don't know who I am. Um, so as Ken kind of alluded to in his intro, uh, I am based in the UK in a town called Ipswich. Uh, so it's nine o'clock in the evening at the moment over here. I can see there's mentions of uh, other Europeans on here of on a similar time frame. Uh, so I have my, my glass of red here. Cheers. <laughs> it's the time of the day for us. Um, and uh, my children are sleeping upstairs, hopefully. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know where Ipswich is, this is what we're kind of known for on the east coast of the UK. Uh, Anglo-Saxon heritage and making beer, really. Um, I teach Excel primarily, Power BI as well. Done that stuff for a long, long time now. Um, including YouTube channels and blogging, which is where most people know me from, especially in uh, the modern world we live in, like YouTube and all that stuff. I also run a user group. You know, Ken was with us last night, as he mentioned, um, talking about monkey tools, and that that's up on our Computer Cargo YouTube channel, among other things. And I've written some books, and I'm an MVP. Um, things to expect from this. So... This session is aimed at those of you who are going to be new to Lambda functions, or maybe you've got a little bit of experience. You know, that's where it's pitched. I'm sure everyone will enjoy it, hopefully. But for those of you who may be new, it is right up your street. Um, we're going to support that by doing two Lambda function examples. So we'll have a quick chat, very, very quick chat about what they are. And uh, then we'll support that with two examples. The first one pretty much dominates the session as we kind of grow and kind of iterate on its progress uh, and then the second one's nice and quick really just to kind of uh, cement what we know and show something cool as a kind of finishing finale hopefully um yes yeah, so we're going to look how to use optional parameters and f functions let's get through this we've got three ways to share it um and we're going to look at how we can view them in something called the afe the advanced formula environment and we're going to have some fun Yay. Guaranteed, hey? So what is a Lambda? Um, notice the bullet points, by the way, team. Yes, I do. Take care. Um, so a Lambda function is a custom function uh, that we can create in Excel and then reuse it as much as we want anywhere. And as you saw in the previous slide, the talk that we can share it with other workbooks or other uh, individuals. And there's a few ways of doing it, which we will see. Uh, we can create and call them from the grid, so we don't have to go into any editor or anything like this. We literally create them, although you can, um, we literally create them on the sheet and use them on the sheet, just like any other uh, function can be used, whether that be a, a sum or a, a VLOOKUP or whatnot. And why should we care about this stuff? It's quite a, a niche topic, some will say. Um, I've put that the three main reasons, and we'll see a couple of those kind of ideas in the session, is that you might create a function to cover, that's a typo there, uh, a specific like niche area where maybe Microsoft haven't produced a function yet, and you do this calculation, and you're thinking, well, Microsoft haven't got around to it, let's do it myself. Uh, you might want to create a better version of one of their functions. If you don't like the way one of them operates, if you disagree with a parameter or how it's used or whatever, do your own one. 
Um, and also you might be here helping out colleagues or friends, dare I call them, um, who are not as good at formulas as you. So it might just be something that you find quite easy, whether that be a, a nested if or some uh, financial calculation, like calculating financial quarter or something. Uh, and you're creating this built for purpose that your colleague can use easy peasy and they don't have to worry about any, you know, how many brackets at the end kind of stuff. I don't really know my slides. So, yeah, this is a good slide. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how do we do this Lambda functions before we dive in and actually do one, which is best, is we're going to write the formula to start with, uh, the formula that we hope to turn into a Lambda. Uh, we're going to make sure that works. Then we're going to convert it into a Lambda. We're going to create that Lambda. We're going to test that that works still. And then we're going to define it, i.e. You know, pretty much create a Lambda really. Define its name and description so it's then available on the grid. Which I don't really have a, another good slide after that, so I'm going to quickly switch gears and uh, open up our first file. Got a couple of files here. Uh, so uh, we've got three ranges and the idea for this first Lambda example, our main Lambda example, is that in column B here, we would like to extract text between two characters. Uh, so many of you probably know, if you use formulas a lot, that obviously Excel's got loads of functions for this, to your left, right, mid, text before, text after, and others to help out, like find and len and all this uh, shenanigans. Um, so we can do lots of stuff, uh, but they don't have one that specifically takes text between characters um, in the way that Power Query does. Uh, so we're going to do our own. So in this first example, it's the same delimiter. You know, there's this hyphen or this minus, whatever you want to call it, uh, that is separating the number, the word, and then the you know, ultimate uh, finale number. Um, so the way we could approach this right now, apologies if you can hear the dogs outside, um, that we're going to use the text after and text before combo. So just writing a formula as normal to start with. Uh, I could do a text after function and I can run it on this range. So cell A2 here. The delimiter is going to be a hyphen. So take all the text after that first instance of the, the hyphen delimiter. So running this on its own is just going to extract everything from the word training because that is the, you know, the first character after the hyphen. And then I can go back to that and wrap a text before on that and say once you've extracted that can you take the text before the other hyphen delimiter so doing this reasonably quick at the moment so you want to get to a lambda but we have produced a formula that does what we want it to do and we can send that down and i can see that it's extracting all the text at the moment between two hyphen delimiters so it's the same delimiter you can probably see the examples upcoming that's going to change um, and it works and, and maybe, you know, most of us in here or pretty much all of us in here are quite experienced Excel users. The kind of people who go to these groups generally are normally. So you'd probably find it quite easy. Maybe you learned something there, but it's probably something that you're familiar with or you may know um, maybe older methods of doing that. But our goal is that we want to credit. We want to turn it into a lambda for people who are not so comfortable. <laughs> That's one, Eric. Uh, for um, something uh, like this, you know. So step number one is done in our kind of process of how to create these lambda things. We've we've written our formula. We now want to convert it into this lambda. And to do this, the the signature for this. I'm not going to bother putting this into a, a slideshow again, if you don't mind. Um, but it asks you for a parameter. Uh, which is optional here, uh, as many parameters as you need, and then the ultimate calculation. So this example here has got three parameters, like if you provide it with a sales value, a target and a bonus, it can then use that information and do this calculation. You know, if the value is bigger or equal to bonus, do this, otherwise don't. So in our example, breaking that down, we have two bits of information that we want to provide. We need to give our lambda the, the the range, like the cell or the range, whatever it may be, the array, and the delimiter. They're the only two bits of information it requires in order to then go ahead and do what it needs to do. 
and they're the two bits of information that we gave it. You could argue there's three bits. We'll come back on that in a minute. At the moment, we're saying there's two. So uh, coming up to the formula bar for this, I'm going to wrap a uh, lambda before this. And it will prompt us for. Or did it? My uh, my zoom, it's not ready. Sorry. Give me one second. It's because I did a, a restart on this machine uh, before we came on. Let's get the wrong one as well, but never mind. There we go. Uh, so just wanted to show it asking for a parameter or calculation. You know, we want to provide it with, with two parameters. Um, as we mentioned, the uh, the range and the delimiter. So we can call these whatever we want. Well, not anything, obviously. <laughs> Can't call it A1. Um, but we're going to call this one uh, range. We'll put in my comma, as it is for me. And then the second parameter, uh, I'll call it uh, character one. So I'm going to call it uh, CHAR1. Uh, so at the moment, just to make sure we can all see this, I've defined a couple of parameters. Uh, one of them I've simply called range. The other one I've decided to call character one. You can probably guess why I've used the one here with what's coming soon. Uh, and I've got my comma on the end and I've done alt enter, ALT, alt enter. Uh, I know Eric's a fan of that kind of stuff, uh, as is Christian, which we see is in the room. Um, and then I've got the formula we did, uh, red bracket on the end, telling me that I'm missing a bracket at the moment uh, for the lambda, so I better throw that in. So we've got our two parameters and then a calculation, that final calculation. Uh, so this bit here, we could have added another parameter or a calculation. Uh, so I'm just going to do my alt enter and put a bracket on the end there. So we've now converted it into a lambda. Now, if I press enter to run this, uh, we are going to get an error. Let me get rid of these so it's a bit easier to see. And this error is showing at the moment because we haven't defined the lambda. I'm just writing this lambda function like, on the grid at the moment. Um, and it doesn't operate in that manner. So we're getting this calc error. Uh, we're going to proceed with it on the grid for a moment, though, because we want to go to a next step now that we've converted it to a lambda and tested it still works. Now it worked before we converted it. Now we have, does it still work? Uh, the calc error isn't really telling us much. So to do this, oh, I actually had a slide for this, so I feel I should use it. Look at this. I even made them purple. Um, we put a couple of uh, brackets on the end after that closing bracket and we provide uh, the answers, you know, the information for those three parameters. So to, well, in our case, two parameters. So to do that, after that closed bracket, I'm not keeping up with this uh, chat very well, so if there is a question, <laughs> let me know. Um, I'll put an open bracket on the end. I'll provide the information. So the range is A2, comma, and then the delimiter, as we know, is the uh, the hyphen. Well, I just realized I haven't changed my uh, things, have I? If anyone mentioned that, well done, because I haven't been looking at the chat enough. It seems a bit, bit too active for me to keep up with at the moment. Um, but my apologies, I haven't changed the uh, the given information to the parameters at the moment. So that A2, should have been converted to range. And these two, uh, you know, explicitly mentioned delimiters here should have been char one. And also, again, sounds a bit weird calling it char one at the moment. Just trying to save hassle in a minute. Uh, char one again. So just replacing the, uh, you know, the explicitly given uh, information with the parameter. So the kind of versatile form, the variable, if you will, whatever you want to kind of call it, whatever works in your head. And now we're providing it in this test environment. And these are the two things to use in those uh, situations. Uh, so running it now should work as it did before, just showing that although we haven't defined this Lambda for like proper use yet, um, it is continuing to work. Now we've converted it and we've providing it some some samples. And I guess in reality, you know, we should provide it with more samples and test it a bit more rigorously before we maybe waste their time going defining it and sharing it and realizing it's all wrong. Um, but it's a nose an easy one. We all trust each other, don't we? That's probably great. Let's go and define it. 
So uh, we're going to look at a couple of ways of doing this at different points in this session. Uh, for this first way, I'm going to keep it all kind of official, if that's the, the right word to use, and use the, the typical Microsoft tools. So I'm going to define the name using the, the buttons on the ribbon. Now I'm going to take a copy of the Lambda text. Uh, so I'm not going to take the brackets on the end that we use to test its uh, functionality. Just going to take the actual Lambda itself as it was when we first wrote it. Let's take a copy of that, just doing a right click so it's all visible on our screen as to what I'm doing right now. And I'll press escape, which is not visible. Maybe I could have pressed a button. So I've taken a copy, I think I did. And I'll go to my formulas tab and uh, to define name uh, so that I can define a name for this. Uh, and a description would be a, a good idea as well. So let me pop into here. Then we get this lovely tiny uh, window, which I'm going to resize. I'm going to give it a remarkable name, such as text between. Uh, then I'm going to type an award winning uh, description slash comment like uh, this extracts text between characters. Please write something better than this. The full stop in the end. And then I'm going to paste into the box my lambda, this lovely one line box, which is incredibly helpful. I'm going to paste it into there. So you probably can't read that because it's so ridiculously small. Um, but I've got a, my name at the top, uh, the description, which obviously we've got loads more space to write there, and then just ridiculous, tiny, don't have any space. Uh, but I just pasted it in, so it wasn't too worrying right now. I certainly wouldn't advise trying to edit the thing in there. Uh, and we'll click OK. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. um, so if I click OK, that has now been defined. So I just want to take uh, a copy of my Lambda at the moment, because I'm probably going to need that in a sec, and I'm just going to dump it somewhere else. So I've got it to hand. And then now that we've got our Lambda, I'm going to write it as a normal function. So if I'm somebody else now, which I often pretend I am. Um, I want to extract the characters between those, those hyphens. So I'll say equals text between. And it doesn't matter how many times you do it, it always feels good when you see your, your name up in lights. Um, text between comes up and we can use it just like any other. I can say I'll have text between, please. There's my award winning description coming up that everybody would understand and think, oh, I know exactly how to use this. And I'm going to run it on the, the same data, which is not particularly exciting uh, at the moment. So A2 comma delimiter is going to be this hyphen that Alan keeps doing. Uh, I'll close bracket on that and run it. And now, you know, the idea being that anybody can do that. It's only two questions and add lovely words like range and child one <laughs> um, that everybody understood and they could do that without worrying about, oh, what do I do first? Is it text before or text after? You know. What does instance mean or whatever this stuff? Awesome. Lambda one, uh, which we're going to improve over the next uh, couple. I think time's going around. Right I'm going to try and do this within 60 uh, on the board. Uh, there was the scope for, uh, for the worksheet, Linda. That list. So we've completed our kind of four step uh, process here, define that lambda. We may not bother with all four steps as we move on into the latter stages. And we're going to look at a different way to define one at some point as well. I may relax a bit on the testing. <laughs> this is not too serious right now. And um, what we now want to do is take that lambda a little bit further, though. And the plan is to do that by bringing in a, an optional parameter. So looking at our example, we've now got the, the same data because I couldn't be bothered to type different stuff. And the difference being at the risk of maybe stating the obvious, although it's not that visible a thing, uh, that we have a space as a delimiter now instead of the, the dash or the hyphen. So now we're at delimiters are different. So I'm going to take this copy of the lambda that I did. 
So I'm not going from scratch. I can just proceed from where I left off. Um, and up in this formula bar, we will create a third parameter for the second character. Yeah, because now they're different or they may sometimes be different. So I'm going to call it char2, as I'm sure you saw coming. I'm not going to give away any prizes for that. And I'm going to or give it away any prizes anyway. Um, and I'm going to put it in square brackets, which is not necessary for this task, but for those of us who write functions a lot, you know, not just in Excel, but, you know, we do them in other places, whether that be in, in Power Query or VBA or, or whatnot, and DAX and stuff. It's all pretty regular viewing for us that the square brackets indicate that optional argument. So I'm going to wrap char2 in the, these, uh, these square brackets. I'm then going to replace the char1 that we had in this text before. So that's the, the kind of second character. So I'm going to call that char2. And, you know, I could check it working right now, but I want to kind of trim some of the fat in uh, in terms of time. So keeping with this and doing it in one example, I now want to make it that optional argument. Again, at the moment, it's not optional. So the square brackets doesn't mean it's optional. It's just a, a kind of visual thing. Uh, to do this, we're going to use a function called is omitted. And our friend if. If you don't like if, what the heck's going on? It is omitted. So just in the middle around this char2 here, just in the process of writing if and is omitted, uh, the function comes up telling me that it will check if a value is omitted and you know, say true or false, which is obviously perfect for an if function, which talks in that language. So if char2 has been omitted, if they did not bother putting char2, then what I'd like to do is just use the same character as char1. So just like our very first lambda, where I only provided one delimiter, it knew to use it for both characters. Now I'm giving the user an option to choose two characters, but at the same time to make their life easier, you know, if it is the same one again, like, why well, should I have to type it again? <laughs> so that's what I'm using the, the logic of. So if they omit it, it must be the same one. You only have to put a second one if it if you need to, you know. So if char two has been omitted, then use char one. Otherwise, use char two. Uh, boom. So if char two has been omitted, use uh, let's get some colours on board. Char one. Otherwise, use char two. Uh, two brackets on the end. One belonging to if. One belonging to text before. With the colours there. Uh, do, 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 don't think I've missed anything. Now, at the moment, if I press enter, you know, this is going to complain at me. I'm just going to take a quick copy before I do so. So I need to update the lambda that we defined. I'm just going to update the existing one. So I'm going to proceed and press enter anyway. So we know we're going to get this calc error. Yeah, it's not happy with us. You know, we could have given it some sample values to check. But, you know, we don't care. Live on the edge, don't we? Let's go back to my name manager. And I'm going to paste over. Uh, that TBL point shouldn't be there. Never mind. Um, I'm going to paste over that. That being the, uh, the stuff that we can't read at the bottom. And I'm going to close and save because saving and closing is so last week. And uh, crack on with this and see if it works. Uh, so text between here. It now prompts us for the three arguments. Yeah, three. <laughs> it's difficult getting to three. Um, range char one and char two. There's the square brackets around the char two. So if I provide it with the range of uh, D2, character one is a space, and the other character is going to be a hyphen. Ooh, whoa. A hyphen. Um, that's why it's going to be crazy in that, uh, that cell there. But if I press enter on that, it's quite happily working. So we've now updated our Lambda to handle uh, two different characters. Uh, but equally, if I went back to the other one, I'm going to write it again for no particular reason, rather than edit it. Um, I'll say that that's the range. And I'm only going to provide it with the hyphen because it's the same delimiter. 
So I'm just going to completely ignore that third argument that we we provided. Uh, but it continues to work because if an is omitted said, you know, if they don't give you a second character, just use the same one. Uh, so in both cases, when I don't need it, I can ignore it. When I do need it, I can provide it. And now it doesn't matter what the characters are, it continues to work. Cheers, Ken. Um, OK, we're doing good. I'm going to continue with this. I mean, this um, this next example in a moment is is probably something I could have cut if time was going to be an issue. Um, yeah, any questions, let me know. I'm thundering through this quite quickly. Uh, but it was to bring in the idea of multiple instances. Um, and this is actually something that came up as a question on my YouTube like, earlier this week, actually. Um, this exact, well, not this exact example. They weren't writing monkey and book. <laughs> but um, they they had some uh, like angle brackets and somebody asked me about getting a second occurrence of them. I thought, oh, oh, I'll use them my meetup. <laughs> um just because it was yeah it's happening so uh obviously i put in all this rubbish sample data of dates and quarters and numbers that don't mean anything but we can make up a real life example but now i want the second occurrence of the angle bracket so the different characters you know ones you know like less than greater than let's call them um but i want the second occurrence of that like less than um, so I uh, forgot to copy my um, Lambda from before, didn't I? Let me just go back a few stages so I can save myself a bit of hassle. Here we go. I'll nick that Lambda. Copy that. Just did a control C to copy that. I'm going to paste in here. Um, cool. And we're going to bring in this, this instance. Now, if you're familiar with these text before, text after functions, if you're not, uh, it may be that you don't need them. <laughs> um, but if you've been struggling along with mid and search and all that stuff, uh, these are fantastic, which hopefully you're, you're noticing here. And um, they provide this instance number. So in the past, we'd use things like substitute to try and get that stuff going. They had an instance number argument would substitute it for something else and as a flag and use that and all this gymnastics with formulas uh, but now these functions have this instance number built into them and also a bunch of other stuff which yeah it's pretty cool pretty powerful but in my day-to-day -day job of training is not saying always appreciate because people open this up and think oh my god I get six questions <laughs> it's like calm down you, you probably don't need one too <laughs> uh, it's not as bad as what it you know it seems a bit intimidating maybe to to people which it shouldn't be uh, but we're going to take advantage of this instance number. You can see the square brackets for the optional that they've done here. So this is something we, we kind of already know how to do be a bit with what we've spoken about already. So I guess it's quite nice as a to kind of cement our skills. So coming in here, I'm going to give it a fourth parameter, uh, square brackets, so that this is an optional parameter. So just zooming in each time so we don't miss a step here, just added in the instance, got my comma on the end, uh, square brackets so people visually can see that it's optional. Then I need to add it into this bit here. So the text after, I need to add in that instance. So after char one, comma, instance. So that's where somebody's going to provide it. They're going to say what instance it is. So you can see it's matching up with the text after function at the moment. Obviously, I don't have to call it instance, could have called it anything. Um, and then I want the if and is omitted combination at this point, so that if somebody does not provide an instance, then just use the first instance. And if they do, then obviously do that one. So before instance, we will write if in bracket is omitted. If they omit the instance, comma use number one, otherwise use uh, instance. One, two. I think I've got the right brackets in there. Uh, just coming in here. So if is omitted at the instance argument, if that's been omitted, then use character one. Just take the first instance. So sorry, character one is the wrong way of saying it, really. Um, otherwise, use what they told you, which is the instance parameter. And a couple of 
close brackets there. Yeah. Just trying to look at the colors to check it's all good. So uh, just going to take. <laughs> um, hey, Alan, just just to let you know, as, I, as I'm looking, uh, watching you look at the chat there, the only probably question I think that's uh, that's actually sort of relevant to be asked in, in what's going on here is uh, Sergey suggested maybe using if error instead of if is omitted. Thoughts? <laughs> um, I never question anything that Sir Guy says. <laughs> Likewise, yeah. <laughs> Especially in formulas. Um, yeah, I've just never done it that way. So, yeah, whatever he says goes pretty much when it comes to, to formulas, especially. Um, I've always just used uh, if just because I'm comfortable in that, in that, uh, that field. I'm just looking for the question. Oh, yeah, I see it. Cool. Stuff. I know you're a fan of the uh, the if error from last night, Kim. I can't um, remember where I used that, but all right, yeah, fair enough. I don't mind it. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> you used it to surround in one of your built-in formulas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cube functions, yeah. Gotta have them. <laughs> um, cool. I'm going to take a copy of this just to update the uh, lambda. Uh, take a copy of that. Run it. Get a calc error. And I'll come back and update this for probably the final time in this. Uh, oh, let's make it bigger. Wasn't it amazing when they allowed you to resize windows? Uh, paste over that. Uh, close and save. And if I've not made any of the mistakes, I should now be able to use this. So equals text between. Uh, the range being, once again, just running off the grid at the moment. So cell G2. Uh, character one is our less than. Uh, character two is our greater than, let's call them. And the instance is going to be number two. Yeah, so we're looking for uh, this one. And if I close bracket and run that, uh, now we've got it with uh, an instance number. So just, you know, we started by creating this lambda. Uh, which, you know, this example is working on the idea that, you know, yes, Excel doesn't have one, although it's got some very close stuff. So it's kind of covering that niche. But really, I'm working on the idea of, you know, creating something that, you know, my colleagues, I don't actually have any colleagues, but if I worked in an office still, my colleagues could use easily, you know, because there's always going to be a variety of skills in the office. And we're creating this as a, a kind of super user, shall we say, and providing it for others that they could do easy peasy. And do something which they might look at this and think, oh, crikey, how the heck do you do that? Cool. Um, a couple of things I wanted to show at this at this point. I mean, one of them, which I was just going to show briefly, uh, to be honest, was the uh, advanced formula environment. So if I was to click on, we're actually going to see it again in a little while, briefly again. But if I was just going to work off the grid at the moment, and I click on cell H2. So this, I'll actually, uh, and now I'll proceed with this. I'll, I'll click on it. Um, and I'm going to pop to my home tab, where on the end of the home tab, I have this uh, Excel uh, Labs add in. Uh, so I've already got it enabled here, already got it installed, uh, but you can grab it from your insert tab and you can go through get add ins and just search for. Excel Labs and stuff. Uh, but if I open up Excel Labs here, it will give me a couple of options, hopefully. Here we go. And I'm going to ask it for the advanced formula environment. And open it up. And I say I'm not going to go into detail on this. I just wanted to show it briefly. Uh, I just want to zoom in to make sure we can all see it. So at the moment, it's showing me what's on the grid. So it says, it says grid up here. And I'm in cell H2. So it's shown me in, you know, what is intended to be a better editing experience, although I tend to still write them on the sheets personally, to be honest, I feel more comfortable there. And that's kind of why I've been doing it that way. Um, but even if I'm writing on the sheet, I could have this in a pane uh, to my right, or I think we can put it on another screen as well. Um, and at least I can see it maybe in a better layout there, even if I am writing on the sheets, which is my preference you know i was in this call my 
may have other preferences. Um, now we see there's other options at the top though. You know, another option at the top is names, which is essentially what we've got. You know, we've named a lambda, just like you can name formulas, name ranges, name constants and stuff. So if I switch to names, uh, now I can see my lambda in here. Um, and I see I've got options to edit and delete. You know, just rather than going into the name manager, I can do some managing from here with a save button to kind of sync it with the, the name manager. And if I did click on edit, I said just to see it, I wasn't planning on editing anything here. Uh, but if I did click on edit, it now you know shows what, what should be a more user-friendly environment with the name description, the arguments, and then it's, it's chosen how to lay it with his indentation and use of color and, and so on. So it's not just about lambdas here. You know, there was the option for the grid. We can write just normal formulas here and, and see them in here. It's not just about lambdas. Uh, but because that formula got a, a little bit larger in, in terms of you know, how much we wrote, probably a nice opportunity to bring that in to see it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do at this point, if I just close down that labs to get it out of the way for a moment, is we're meant to talk about different ways of sharing these lambdas. And the simplest way to share a lambda um, is just to copy it. So if I had a new workbook, if I did control N to start a new workbook, and I'm just going to write something crazy in here. So I could put Barry, hyphen, I could have Shuka, slash, could have Ken, hyphen. We could have Christian in there, slash, uh, Eric, slash, Faraz. And I've got loads of uh, stuff. Um, and then what I want to do is maybe I want to extract, what do I want to extract? Uh, maybe you want to extract Eric's name, you know, the second occurrence of a slash, uh, same delimiter. Well, actually, yeah, no, this work. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pop back to my other workbook. So uh, view, switch windows, uh, back to my Lambda workbook. And this cell in H2 has got the Lambda in it. So I'm just going to take a copy of that cell. I'm going to jump back to my other workbook in a different way that I just did. And I'm going to paste it in here. Control V to paste. And we can see that brings across the, the lambda. So at the top, I can see this lambda coming in. Obviously, it's taken exactly what I did with the, the angle brackets and second delimiter. So it's thrown up an error right now. Um, I can just delete that. I don't care about that anymore. Obviously, I could have edited it, but I could have pasted that anyway and just deleted it. And just the act of copying that cell, or we could have copied a sheet, but you know, copying a cell in my example. Um, should make that in this workbook now. So I can click anywhere and just say equals text between, and it's here. So just copying a cell with that lambda in, and you can delete it straight away, but just the act of copying it, mega simple, mega fast, you know, maybe not the most professional way of sharing stuff, but everyone's comfortable doing that. You know, you can ask the biggest office idiot to copy something and they should be all right. Um, I'm going to text between, that range, comma, uh, slash. Uh, do you want co character two? No, I do not. Let's skip that completely. Optional argument. It's the same delimiter. Instance is going to be number two. Close that off. And we've got Eric's name. Uh, so I was able to say that. Uh, it's doing my nothing. Uh, I was able to say to. Uh, you know, cell B2, use the slash, ignore that argument, our optional one, the limiter two, and it's rocking and rolling. <laughs> Coming soon, Ken. Um, awesome. Let me get rid of this workbook. So. Hey, Alan, just a quick question here from uh, from Martin. Uh, could it have been any cell that copies? I, I would assume it would have to be the cell that actually has the Lambda function in it that needed to be copied. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Which leads yeah. back to Mark's comment on how he has worked with some office idiots who couldn't copy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, going, going back a long time, when I started training 22 odd years ago, you know, different era back then, 
and you'd see people pick up the mouse and put it on the screen and all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess different time back then. Um, right, got to sw switch gears. So we've seen one way of sharing. We've seen a lambda. We've seen optional arguments. Uh, I guess I could have my slides to kind of theoretically tick through this stuff at this point. Uh, so we've done one example. Obviously, another one's about to come in. Uh, we've seen is omitted and we've, we've seen one way of sharing and a little bit of viewing in, in, in the IFE. So keeping with this uh, this file, I just switched into another sheet here. I have a table. Uh, it's the first time we've seen a, a table, but you know if it you know if it quacks like a duck, it's a table or something like that. Um, and this is called TBL points. And I've got some points assigned to names that we might recognize. And our goal is that we want to return the top N. Yeah. So you're setting up a rankings like a, a top 10 or something is very common, you know, reporting and stuff. And there's numerous ways of doing this in Excel. I've done loads of blog posts and YouTube videos over my time on it. But probably the simplest way always depends how you want it but keeping it simple for now is to use the sort function nowadays with take so if i just wanted the mega simple like top five uh, i could write a sort function and say that i want to sort tbl points by column two you know the points column i want it in descending order so minus one and that's just going to simply you know sort all of those by the the points column, column two in a descending order. Uh, give my spill range there. And I can wrap the take function around that. And say from that array, can you take five, like the first five? You know, there's lots of cool things you can do with this take and also one called drop. I'm just going to just take the first five rows from, uh, from that array, i.e. the top five. Um, and that's our easiest way of just getting a a simple top five, you know, not taking into account tired values or other stuff that, you know, multiple criteria and you know, this can get a complex topic. Uh, so we can do that. And once again, our goal is to turn it into a lambda. So, you know, one could argue that this is a new function. You know, Excel doesn't really have a top N. You know, Google Sheets has a, a sort N, I think they call it. Um, although it's not hard for us to create this stuff. So. You could argue maybe they do have one in a way. Um, but we're going to create a proper one, you know, one that is the, this top end. So because we've done this a few times, really, uh, one could say, uh, just going to quickly convert this to a lambda and not worry about testing it or anything. Uh, so I'm going to come back up here and make my lambda. Um, going to give it three parameters. Uh, one of them is going to be, I think I'll call it array. Uh, the other one is going to be the column to sort by. So we said column two. I want this to be a question. So I'm just going to call that coal. And then I'm going to provide n, like how many? Is it top five, top 10, top 27? What is it? It'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Um, so here it is. Uh, just crack my lambda here. You know, I want the array of what column are we sorting by and how many are we taking? Uh, then I need to replace them, don't I? I need to replace uh, TBL points with array, two with coal, and five with n, keeping it descending. So what's going to be top? You can see where we can see take this further if we cared though. Uh, TBL points will be the array. Number two is going to be coal, and five is going to be n. So now we're just swapping those, you know, specific values for the by the parameter or the, the variable, whatever. So that's the information fed by the user of this. And I just need my final closed bracket for my lambda. And I say, I'm not going to worry about testing this. I'm going to leave on the edge a bit and take a copy of that and uh, press enter. So it moans at me. And now we're going to define this lambda function. So, so far we've been defining it using the name manager which offers an approach um we didn't do this so kind of semi saw it which was the advanced formula environment we can use that and we can actually define names in there 
you, you saw an existing name in there. Uh, for this example, I was going to go to Monkey Tools and hopefully not miss this up in front of Ken. Um, so I've got his Monkey Tools uh, add-in, which, um, you know, it's Ken's add-in. He spoke a bit at the start and many of you will know about this if you're regulars to his group or if you saw the meetup last night and stuff. Um, and I'm going to use this Biblio Monkey to define a Lambda within here and then hopefully share it with, well, not share it, but it will be available in uh, another workbook. Uh, took a copy of that, didn't I? Uh, Biblio Monkey. Um, so in here, we've got different things that we can uh, we can store in this kind of library. Library. Uh, we're going to use this Lambda. So I just clicked on Lambda. I'm going to click on this Add New. So Add New. I'm going to add a new Lambda. It, let's press the wrong one. I was wondering why it said Office Scripts. Lambda. I'm going to define a name. Uh, top N. A, an amazing description. Uh, returns the best. Please write something better. Paste. Uh, look how much area I've got here compared to the name manager. Um, so here I am. I've defined my lambda. Top N returns the best. Paste it in there. Um, I didn't mean to point at it with that squiggle, but coincidentally, it's almost pointing at that save button. Um, I'm going to click on save. Uh, so that should be in there now. Uh, now, with me saving it, There. Uh, with me saving it, if I went to formulas and name manager, at the moment it's not in here. Yeah, so it's. Yeah, what's going on with this zooming? Um, at the moment it's not in here. So I've still seen my text before, sorry, text between from before. Um, but I don't see the one that I put in monkey tools. It's, it's within there, it's within the Biblio monkey, but it's not been injected into here yet. So I don't see it in the name manager. And at the moment, I don't really care. Cause, well, maybe I do care. Do I care? Yeah, let's care. Let's do it. Let's use it here. But I want to use it in another web. So I'm going to close this down, go back to it. Monkey tools, Biblio monkey. Here it is. Just expanded uh, my lounge and I can see it in here. So I'm going to select it. And at the bottom, uh, we have an option to update. Let me just mention that first of all. Um, but we also have uh, the option to inject this uh, into this current project. Uh, so if I inject that, uh, now it will be in the name manager. So now it can be used just like any other Lambda that I've done. So now I've got two, hooray. And we know what that means is that I can use this now and I can say, right, can I have the top N from TBL points, uh, column two, and just to make it different, I'm going to point to the cell that you probably spotted with a number in it rather than typing in five. And now I have the top uh, 10 or the top whatever's in that cell. So I can change it to six or change it to eight or whatever, you know. Um, so that's how we defined it uh, using monkey tools rather than name manager. Yeah. The endpoint, as we see at the moment, is the same, really. We've got, we've got a lander at the end of the day with a name and a description and does the calculation. <laughs> Just took hey, a, Alan. Yes. Uh, dude, number one, thank you. Um, and, you know, you're the first person that's ever, I've ever actually seen demo a monkey tool feature beside myself. So thank you for that. That's awesome. I just want to give you one quick tip on this one, too, in case yeah. you didn't pick this up yesterday. If you just go right click on any one of your cells. Any cell at all. Any cell at all. Doesn't matter what. At the very oh. top, you've got an insert from Biblio Monkey right there. So you can actually insert your Lambda right from there. You don't actually, although that looks like a bug, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look into that. But yeah, if we if you have it in there, it's supposed to be listed in that one so that you can actually just go and insert it straight without even having to go and pop open the Biblio Monkey uh, separately. So um, I'll take a look into why that's not being added though right away, because it should actually be in there. So look at that, new feature and new bug. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, indeed, Melinda. Awesome. Well, um, what it has done is provided 
um, another way that we can share it. So we can sort that we can share it by just copying a cell. Um, but if I do switch workbooks to this one called quiz results, which is open on the wrong screen, quiz results, we have <laughs> um, we've come to a situation here where somebody's given us a bunch of data. Um, you know, we've got all these responses to some kind of quiz or something, like these people and their responses. We've got the name of what the question is or maybe the question and we've got their answer. Um, and what we want to do is find, you know, the top N. I want to know, you know, which of these people answered the most correct answers. You know, here's the answers. Here's what they said. How many of them are right? <laughs> and what's my like top three, shall we say? Um, now we've got our top n function, and uh, I can in inject that from from Monkey Tools into this workbook, which I will do it at some point, the same as before. But we also need another function at this point, and to bring in the third way of sharing, so two and three together, really here, um, to show our, our three ways of sharing a lambda. Uh, this will be to import from a gist. So if I went back to that Excel Labs and that AFE, if I went back to Home, Excel Labs, open up the Advanced Formula environment. And uh, what am I doing? I want to jump to my names, I think, modules. So I'm going into names, modules, and uh, I want to open up this workbook module. You don't have to put it straight into this module. You can create additional modules and stuff uh, but this is where I find myself in this modules area and I've opened up the workbook and this button here allows you to download lambdas that you already created and have saved as a as a, a gist which I have somewhere so this is on github I'm not a big user of github others of you in the room may well, not my, probably not a lot better than me, uh, but I have created just for landers, which I do as an example. So I'm just copying my URL at the moment on another screen. So if I click that button, it would ask me, what's your gist URL? I'll paste that in. So you can share this with anybody. You can go onto GitHub and use other people's landers. You know, if they've made it available so you can search for it, or if they give you the URL, you know, so if it's, you can create private gists, but then somebody can give it URL. Like I don't want others to find it, but you can share it with other people and you just import them. So if I paste that in and I import, um, here it gives me a, a couple of pre-created lambdas. So I've got one that just returns a name at random from a list. And then I've got the one that we actually need, uh, which I've called quiz results. And um, you can't quite see what it does there at the moment, can you? But uh, if I was to widen this for a moment, not to go into detail on that, but uh, uh, it's doing a few things. I guess the main things is it's doing this by coal for each person and it's you know, comparing the answers against their column and summing them and then it's kind of stacking them into some report. So at the moment, there's our, our three parameters. So if I close this and um, I can create this right now, I could say name and then um, what do I want? Um, number correct, I don't know what to call it. So I'm just putting a couple of headers. Let's turn them bold. These are headers. And I should be able to use quiz results. There it is, quiz results that I just imported from my gist. Uh, the answers are over here, comma. The responses are here, comma. And the headers are here. And if I run this, that's going to do that lambda. Um, and does what you saw, does, does the by row calculations, comparing them to each answer, you know, sums them and then transposes the names and yeah, and stacks. Um, so they're not in order or anything at the moment. I think we know what's coming. But we do have uh, how many each correct. So we can see actually that Claudia looks like she's going to take it. Um, but now I need my top N. I've got my array on like top five, let's say. So over to monkey tools we go. I'm going to do it this way because I'm going to do it. Uh, Biblio monkey. Oh, here we go. So I'm in a different workbook at the moment. 
remember I created this in the other workbook, but I can still see it here. So I'm going to select this and inject it as before. So that now, oh, OK. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to come into here and say top end. Uh, array is what I have done. Let's click on the end. Comma, column number is two again. Number correct is the second column. Obviously, it could be any column in a different scenario. And the N, I said I'd do five, didn't I? Let's do six just to mix things up because I've done five already. Yeah. Close bracket, run it. And now I've got a top end. So, you know, I've got two landers there that were pre created that. The idea was I grabbed from different places. You know, one of them was stored in monkey tools. The other one I downloaded from a gist. So maybe somebody else did that. Uh, and they shared me the URL and said, oh, I've got something that does that. Here you go. And I can just download it in seconds and use what they did, um, along with something that I've done before kind of thing. And then we combined it to get a result from something that looks a bit mental. And, you know, we probably would have dove into Power Query to get that done. Uh, but I've done it with a couple of uh, couple of landers, one one cell. Yes. Well done, Claudia. Taking the crown. And that, uh, I believe, as far as demos goes, is is me done. Hopefully, we had fun. That's the only thing I haven't kind of ticked off there. Um, so I guess I'll. Stop my share of this best so I can see the chat window and that a little bit easier rather than looking away from you. Uh, but I guess it's time to open to any questions or comments. Um, that sounds like a plan, Ken. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Um, for, so anybody that does have any questions, please fire them into the chat. Um, I, uh, I I really enjoyed that. I want to say that, uh, and I always enjoy. I think it's fantastic when I get to see someone else using my tools, which is uh, which is amazing. So thank you for that. And um, now I've got to go back and uh, and scour the uh, the presentation and figure out how to steal all the different lambda patterns that I want that text between in my library. So, um, but yeah, very cool. Um, and thank you, Heather. I appreciate the uh, the kind note on uh, on monkey tools as well. That's uh, that is awesome. Um, Questions on on Lambda functions? Uh, please, by all means, fire them in here. Uh, we would love to uh, love to ask Alan. Um, oh, there you go. Faraz has shared a, mm -hmm. uh, a link on a gist with a few different Excel lambdas. Excellent. <laughs> we'll definitely go and check those out. Um, yeah, I uh, I got to tell you, Alan, I appreciate the way that you actually went through the uh, the original uh, text between. I thought that was a really nice uh, nice demo that uh, sort of builds it up nice and uh, nice and slow and and makes it quite clear how it's all put together. And I I uh, appreciate that. That was uh, that was nice to see. Ooh. Cheers, thanks, Ken. Mm. I don't see questions pouring in here, which means either you blew people's minds or it was like super super clear or both. Yeah, hopefully a bit. There you go. Um, awesome. Well, listen. If there are no questions, um, you know, Alan, big thanks for coming and putting this together for us. I really appreciate it. It was a great presentation. Uh, great to have you here, and uh, we'll definitely uh, try and get you back at some point in the future. Um, outside of that, I want to thank everyone for coming and uh, and participating, and uh, hopefully you learned some uh, some cool stuff here. Uh, don't forget to sign up for the uh, the meetings that uh, or meetups that we have coming up in a couple of weeks with uh, with Reed and with Carlos a couple of weeks after that. Um, and the presentation uh, will be or the recording of the presentation will be up within the next 24 to 48 hours on the Skillwave YouTube channel. And I will make sure that I post on the meetup group once that is available for um, for viewing. Uh, Alan has also mentioned he will share his workbook, so we'll get a link to those and post those on the meetup chat as well. And uh, and there you go. Uh, as far as uh, so, <laughs> um, Christian, uh, regarding your comment about uh, Build Bio Monkey saved optionally on GitHub, uh, I have looked at GitHub. Um, I elected not to use it deliberately. Uh, the management of trying to deal with version control just was something that became too complicated for uh, for what I wanted to do. So uh, we just elected to a database that can sync through your uh, your OneDrive. It was a, an easier thing to get something out there, um, but uh, it, it was. Was an idea that we did explore for sure so um outside of that though uh, i see some great comments coming in alan um fantastic session great mm -hmm. session awesome and uh, I, I couldn't agree more it's been an excellent uh, 
excellent time. So thank you very much, sir. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. All right. Cheers, folks. You bet. We will see you. you. Uh, we will see you all next time. Yeah. See you next. Bye-bye. Cheers. Peace, guys.